In this video, we're going to talk about angular kinematics, also known as rotational motion. So let's start with angular position. Angular position is just what we mean when we talk about some angle, theta. Uh, and we use a very special way to measure theta when we're talking about angular kinematics or rotational motion. So draw an x versus y graph. Um, and then what we're going to do is just draw with a dotted line a circle of some radius r. Okay, so this has a radius of r. And a radian of angular position is when you go a distance around the circle. So around the circle like this, we call this arc length. When you go an arc length s, so we call arc length s because it represents the space you go through. So let's write this, theta is angular position s is arc length, or sometimes we call it the path length. So an angle theta, one radius, or one radian, is when your arc length s is equal to the radius. So one radian is your angle theta when the arc length s is equal to the radius. The way that we express this mathematically is by saying that your, your radian theta is equal to the ratio of s, your arc length, divided by r. So you basically just take like how far you've gone around the circle and then you chop it up into radiuses to say I've gone one radius, two radius, three radius or rads, and so on. In angular kinematics, or motion, it's very common to talk not just about your angular position theta in radians, but the change of your angular position, which we would call delta theta. And we call delta theta your angular displacement. So your angular displacement. So the angular displacement is pretty easy. It's like saying, okay, let's say here at point 1, you have an angular position of 1. And then here at point 2, you have some angular position of, we'll call that theta 2. Well, then your angular displacement is just this angle between the two delta theta, which would be theta 1, sorry, theta 2 minus theta 1. Okay, let's do an example problem. Marty McFly the physics fly is flying in a circle with a radius of 0.5 meters. What is McFly's angular position after flying an arc length of 0.75 from the positive x-axis? Okay, so let's just start there. Um, draw for yourself a circle it's going to be terrible, don't worry. So this circle has some radius of 0.5. And, and what's the positive x-axis? Well, that's just a line that goes off to the right. And if you wanted to, you could say like that this is on an x, y axis. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. And you know that the radius, which I'm going to write up over here, r is 0.5 meters. So how do I find the angular position when I've gone an arc length of 0.75, well, that means starting from this positive x axis, which we always say is an angular position of 0, you go around the circle 0.75. So if I think about that in terms of the radius, that's like 0.75 is like 1 and a half of the radius, if 0.5 is the radius. So I go something like that is my arc length s. So r, 0.5, s.75. So what I'm looking for here, theta, is going to be the arc length s divided by that radius. Because again, the idea is I'm taking this amount of distance that I've gone in a circle and then dividing it up into radiuses, chopping it up into radiuses. So this is simply 0.75 over 0.5. 
So 0.75 over 0.5 is what I just said, 1.5. Uh, and the meters, uh, they cancel out. So that's why we call this a radian or radius, and it's actually technically unitless. There's no unit um, because it is, it's just a ratio of the arc length that you've gone in a circle divided by what the radius is. Okay, so 1.5 radians or rads as we like to call them. So where does this leave us for part B? What is McFly's angular displacement from part A when he reaches the negative x-axis? Okay, so Marty McFly, and I should have given him a little fly wings, uh, goes vzz here. And then it's saying, okay, Marty McFly is at point 8. Let's forget this s. Let's just keep that angular position. I'm sorry, it, uh, is at, at part A, he's at 1.5 radians. Then he goes to the negative x-axis. So that would be here. This is the negative x-axis. So he travels all the way there. Our question is, what is the angular position here? And we'll go ahead and call this theta 1. So theta 1 is the angular position for part A, 1.5 rads. What is our angular position um, at the end, our final angular position, so that's the question. And then we can figure out what the angular displacement is, delta theta, by taking theta 2 minus theta 1, which if we prefer, we could also call these theta and theta naught. That's, that's very common in um, physics applications. So let's do that. OK, so how do I figure that out? Well, the angular position in part b when it's reached the negative axis is 180 degrees. Right, so you've gone a full 180 degrees by the time you've gone from the positive x-axis to the negative x-axis. How many radians is that? Well, if you're familiar, a circle has two pi radians. And 180 degrees is half of a circle. So this is simply pi radians. Now, pi is 3.14, so I could write 3.14 blah, 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 radians. It's, it's, however, really common to just go ahead and call this angular position pi radians. And so for the angular displacement, I would get pi radians minus 1.5 radians. Now, that looks a little goofy. Um, and you can always keep pi in your number if you want. But if I put this into my calculator, the way that it's going to look is that I'll simply just take pi and subtract 1.5. And that's going to give me an angular displacement of 1.64. 64 radians. So that is my angular displacement. Now, a quick note about your calculator. Since we're not using sine, cosine, or tangent, you don't actually have to check to see if your calculator is in radian or degree mode to use this. That's, that's a really important thing. OK, let's talk now about angular velocity. So angular velocity is something where we use uh, the Greek letter omega. Now, you're used to seeing omega like this, but that's a capital omega. For angular velocity, we use the lowercase omega, which looks like kind of like a weird W or butt cheeks. So omega is angular velocity. Let's write this down, is omega. You will forget what that variable is called. And it is angular velocity. So the idea of angular velocity is, is very straightforward. At some point, you're going to be at a position, so like here's Marty McFly, with an angular um, position of, we'll call that angle theta. And then later, you're going to be at a different angular position, which we'll call theta 2. So there is a change in your angular position, or an angular displacement. And this is going to happen at two distinct times. So there will be a change of time. So 
Angular velocity is simply the angular displacement, the change in your angular position, divided by the change in time. Now, since angular position has units of radians and time has units of seconds, then the units for your angular velocity are just going to be radians per second. Now, technically, because the radian is the ratio of arc length to radius, um, and, and the unit goes away, like remember in our example problem um, where we talked about the 0.75 meters divided by 0.5 meters, the meters canceled out. So the radius isn't really a unit, it's almost like a placeholder. And so it's really common for angular velocity for us to call this uh, rat radians per second or just per second, which is known as a hertz. Ooh, baby, it hurts so good. This is often also considered to be frequency because it's like how frequently something is happening. Um, but we'll talk more about that later. Let's do an example problem and pray that it makes sense. A Roomba encounters an obstacle and spins 90 degrees clockwise in point, or sorry, 1.2 seconds. What is the angular velocity of the Roomba? Okay, so this wants me to find omega, the angular velocity. And it gives me this, the spin of 90 degrees. So that's my change of angle or my angular displacement, 90 degrees. Uh, clockwise, oh, that's interesting. So remember that clockwise and counterclockwise for, uh, for angles um, tell us positive and negative. So clockwise is actually negative and counterclockwise is positive. So this would be a negative 90 degrees. And if I was to graph y and x and draw a circle, then I would be located here at that negative 90 degrees. Okay, Whew. glad we caught that. Uh, the time, 1.2 seconds, that's our change in time. Okay, so calculating the angular velocity is really simple. I just need to take that change in angular position and divide it by the change in time. But I have to get my angular displacement, the 90 degrees, into radians to be able to use um, the angular velocity, because the angular velocity has to be in radians per second. So what I do is I convert negative 90 degrees. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can do this. Let me just real quick set up like a factor label type situation for you. Okay, so if I have 90 degrees and I want to convert it into radians, then what I would probably do is I would think in 180 degrees, there are pi radians. And I can use this to calculate uh, or to convert it because the degrees kind of cancel out. Uh, and what I would get is negative 90 over 180 times pi, which is just pi over 2 radians. If I wanted to, I could use pi as a number and take a second, the little caret pi divided by 2, and I could write 0.157 if I prefer. Oh, and this is negative. Don't forget the negative. So negative 0.157 radians. It really doesn't matter. You, you can do whatever you want. Let's, uh, let's use this decimal since it gives us the time as a decimal. So negative 1.57 radians over 1.2 seconds is equal to negative 1.3 uh, yeah, that's great. Zero, so zero eight is one. Radians per second, um, or if we want, we could call that a hertz. But let's leave these all as radians per second. Okay, so that is the angular velocity of the Roomba. The negative just means that it's turning clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Of course, this is inevitably going to lead us to a conversation of angular accelerations. So angular accelerations, we use the Greek letter alpha, or fishy. And the angular acceleration is simply the change in angular velocity, or delta omega, over the change in time. Now the units are really simple. The units are just uh, radians per second per second, or we would call that radians per second squared. Okay, so let's do an example. 
you turn on a fan. <laughs> okay, easy enough. The fan blades reach an angular velocity of 360 RPMs in two seconds. What is the average angular acceleration of the fan blades? Okay, so this wants us to find Fishy, the angular acceleration. Um, and we're going to need to identify the two seconds as the change in time. And now here I've got um, the 360 RPMs and if you're turning the fan on for the first time, what's the initial angular velocity? It's zero, right? So, so to figure out angular acceleration, fishy or alpha, I need delta omega, the change in angular velocity. Well, that's really like saying your final angular velocity omega minus your initial angular velocity. So our initial angular velocity is zero radians per second. And our final angular velocity is 360 RPMs. Okay, so 0 minus 360, well, we can't use RPMs. We have to get it to radians per second squared. So to do that, we're going to do some rad factor labeling. I would say 360 RPMs. Well, that's 360 revolutions per one minute. Okay, so what do I do to get rid of the revolutions? Well, I know that in one revolution, there are 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So all I have to remember is that in one revolution, there are 2 pi radians. Boom, I've converted it to radians per minute. To get rid of the minutes, then I factor label again, and I say in one minute, there is 60 seconds. So I get rid of the minutes. Okay, so now I multiply across 360 by 2 pi. So 360 times 2 is 720. All right, so 720 pi over 1 times 1 times 60. And this is radians per second. Um, and 720 over 60, I think that's a nice number, right? That's a nice number. Yeah, it's 12. Okay, so 720 over 60 is 12. So the angular velocity is 12 times pi radians. Of course, if I want to do 12 times pi, I can do that. That'll just be 12 times like 3.14 or 37.7. Uh, you, you can use that if you want. I'm just going to leave this as 12 pi radians per second for, for right now. Okay, so um, what do I do with this number? Well, now I know that the angular acceleration is 12 pi radians per second minus zero, so I don't even need to do anything there, divided by two seconds. Okay, well, 12 over two is six, so this is six pi radians per second squared, right, because the second per second becomes second squared. And if I want that to be a number, like a decimal, then I would do six times pi and that would give me 18.849, so 18.85 radians per second squared. So it doesn't matter if you leave it in terms of pi or if you multiply it by the 3.14. Either of those is a correct answer. So 6 pi radians per second squared or 18.85 uh, radians per second squared. Now what this says is that with every second, you're gaining an angular velocity of 6 pi radians per second which 6 pi is 3 2 pi's, and a 2 pi is a revolution. So that's like 3 revolutions every second. So imagine you spin 3 times in a second, and every second you gain more and more of that speed. So after another second, now you're going 6 revolutions every second. After another second, you're going 9 revolutions every second. After another second, this continues as you increase in your angular velocity, and that's why we call this an angular acceleration. It may sound fishy, but that really depends on your butt cheeks. Okay, this video is over.